from Washington, this is VOA News. Egypt remains tense and the divide appears to be growing. While in Turkey, concern about one of their allies and an attack in Nigeria. I'm Marty Johnson reporting from Washington. The Egyptian capital remains tense and the divide appears to be growing wider today, hours after supporters and opponents of the deposed President Mohamed Morsi battled in the streets of Cairo and across the country. Officials say the death toll from Friday's fighting has risen to 36, with more than 1,000 others injured. Rockets, bullet casings, and rather rocks and bullet casings, not rockets, and other remnants of the violence remain scattered across the capital city's battle zones. Egypt's new interim president, Jurist Adli Mansour, met at the presidential palace today with the country's army chief and interior minister, Associated Press reports Mr. Mansour also met with leaders of the Temrod Youth Movement, which has been organizing the anti-Morsi rallies. Unlike many of its Arab allies, Turkey has condemned the overthrow of Mohamed Morsi in Egypt. Dorian Jones has more for VOA from Istanbul. On Friday, Turkey's Prime Minister Recep Tayyip Erdogan condemned the military intervention that toppled Egypt's Islamist President Mohamed Morsi and criticized the West for failing to brand the ouster a coup. Coups are evil. Coups target people, the future of democracy, Mr. Erdogan said. Both Brussels and Washington have so far refrained from describing the removal of Mr. Morsi as a coup. But Ankara's key regional allies, Saudi Arabia and Qatar, congratulated the newly appointed Egyptian president, Adli Mansour. The loss of a crucial ally in the Middle East is another blow to Mr. Erdogan's prestige, which has already been damaged by weeks of civil unrest. Dorian Jones of VOA News, Istanbul, Turkey. At least 29 students and a teacher at a Nigerian boarding school are dead after suspected Islamist gunmen first set fire to the buildings and then shot pupils and staff as they tried to escape the flames. Survivors said some of the students were burned alive in the attack in Mamudo village in northeast Nigeria. One student says he was awakened at gunpoint and then suffered a gunshot wound that blew off four fingers from his right hand. The schools in a region where Nigeria's president, Goodluck Jonathan, declared a state of emergency and sent in troops to try to stop militants trying to create a breakaway Islamic state. One father who lost two sons in the attack said gunmen are attacking and there is no protection for students despite all the soldiers. A security official in Yemen says a bomb blast in the capital of Sana'a has killed at least two soldiers. The official said the bombing targeted a car. At least two other soldiers were wounded in the attack and there is no word on who was responsible. In Syria, activists say warplanes, government warplanes, carried out strikes on the outskirts of Damascus today as President Bashar al-Assad's government continues its pushback against rebels. The British-based Syrian Observatory for Human Rights also reported fresh fighting around the capital and renewed government shelling on rebel-held areas in the city of Homs. The, gov- the group said government air raids also targeted Reef Damask province on Saturday, causing injuries and deaths. Two Latin American nations are offering a- asylum to former U.S. intelligence contractor Ed Snowden, who is wanted by the U.S. for disclosing clandestine U.S. surveillance programs. Venezuela's President Nicolas Maduro said Friday, He will offer Snowden humanitarian asylum, and Nicaraguan President Daniel Ortega has also made a similar offer. Portugal's prime minister is negotiating with his coalition partners to keep his government intact, despite two resignations this week. As El Hennessy reports for VOA from London, the Portuguese government is on the brink of collapse after struggling to fulfill tough bailout conditions. 
After holding crisis talks with Portugal's president, Prime Minister Pedro Passos Coelho said he'd found a formula that will hold his government together. Junto do Dr. Paulo Portas. He said he'll do everything to guarantee the necessary solutions that will enable the government to work towards fulfilling its economic and financial program. The details of the agreement were not made public. The future of Mr. Coelho's government was in question this week after two top ministers stepped down. The resignations were tied to Portugal's austerity drive, but Mr. Coelho says his government must push ahead. Zayla Hennessy, London. And the U.S. labor market added another 195,000 jobs, but the country's unemployment rate hung in there at 7.6 percent. I'm Marty Johnson, VOA News in Washington. There's more news on our website at voanews.com.